Possibly my favorite tiling window manager of all time is Xmonad. Xmonad is fantastic. It's light, it's fast, it's very customizable. You can hack on it, you can do anything you want with Xmonad. Anyth anything you can imagine you can probably make happen on Xmonad if you know a little bit of Haskell. So today I wanted to show you guys a few things that, especially if you're coming to Xmonad brand new, and I know a lot of you guys are trying out Xmonad for the first time because I, I push it heavily on the channel because I get uh, emails and comments and toots over on Mastodon from you guys. Hey, I'm trying out Xmonad. How do you do this? How do you do that? Is this possible? I wanted to share with you some things today that you may or may not have known were possible on Xmonad. Let's get started. So let's jump right into it. So one of the things you guys ask me about all the time is full screen applications. So this is my desktop here. This is Xmonad. So if I launched Firefox, let's go ahead and launch a web browser. I'm going to open up a video. All right, so I've got a video playing. I'm going to make it full screen. Watch what happens. It's not really full screen, right? Well, it's because right now I'm in the master and stack layout here in Xmonad. By default, my master and stack layout has gaps around the windows. And Xmonad still res respects the gaps even when I go full screen on something like a video or a video game. So the gap is still there. Also, in Xmonad, there is a functionality called avoid struts. What is avoid struts? It is where you define an area where your panel is at and no window is ever allowed to overlap that area. So you see my panel at the top, even in full screen mode in your web browser watching a video, it will not cover that panel. And a lot of you guys find that annoying. As how do you get around that? Well, of course, there are ways to get around that. So the first thing you need to do is actually get out of any mode that has gaps. What you want to do is get in a monocle mode or a max mode or a full screen mode inside Xmonad. So if I change the layout here and get to monocle mode here, you see monocle at the top in Xmobard. So now I no longer have gaps around the windows and every window takes up 100% of the screen, right? If I go back and full screen the video, see there's no gap around it, but Xmobar is still shown at the top. Again, because we have avoid struts turned on in our Xmonad config, it will never cover that panel. But I want my videos to be full screen. I want it to cover the panel. I don't need to see the panel while I'm watching a movie or a video or playing a video game. How do I, how do I get around this? Well, you know what? Let's dig through the Xmonad and the Haskell documentation. So if I pull up a web browser here and go to the Haskell documentation, there is a Haskell library called xmonad.hooks.managedocs. And what this does is it basically tells Xmonad how to maneuver handling things like docs and panels. And it, it's a very lengthy page, but at some point you will see toggle struts. Okay, so I mentioned in the Xmonad config you have avoid struts turned on, so none of your panel or none of your windows ever overlap your panels or docs, but you don't want that all the time, right? Well, there is a way to toggle that on and off. You see toggle struts here. So the way you need to do this, of course, you need to import this library into your Xmonad config. So let me get back to the desktop. I'm going to open up my Xmonad config. Let's just open it in Emacs. All right, and make sure you have imported here in the imports xmonad.hooks dot manage docs. There it is. And I didn't import the entire library. I specifically asked for just a few things I needed. Avoid struts and then toggle struts. And now if you look down in my key bindings, I've already added a key binding for all of this. All right, I have it right here. Super shift space toggle struts. So super shift space. So right now I'm in monocle mode. If I hit super shift space, boom. It toggles off the struts, toggles on and off. So it no longer respects that there's that space reserved for the panel. It overlaps the panel. Super shift space again, 
uh, makes it start avoiding that area again. It makes the panel visible. So super shift space, super shift space. So that's how you get around when, when you need full screen video, full screen games. Going back to the documentation just very quickly, there's also this that you probably will find helpful. It's this library, xmonad.layout.noborders. What does that do? Well, it gives you the ability to toggle on and off borders around your windows. So if I get back to the desktop, and I'm in monocle mode, full screen mode, so there's no border around these windows because I have my config set up for no borders when I'm in this layout. But if I go back to a more traditional master and stack layout, you can see the window has a border around it. It's got this light blue border. But I have in my config, well, first of all, we need to make sure that we imported that xmonad.layout.noborders library. So right here, xmonad.layout.noborders. It's right there. So we've already got it imported. And then in my key bindings, I have super shift in for no borders, toggles no borders. So super shift in toggles the border off. Super shift in toggles it back on. Super shift in toggles it off. Super shift space to toggles off, avoiding the struts. So it covers the panel, but not entirely. It doesn't to toggle on and off the gap around the window. So that's why it looks a little strange. Again, if I was in monocle mode, this would be full screen, 100% of the screen, no border, and it would look perfect. Matter of fact, I could just cycle through the layouts till I get to monocle mode. That looks pretty good. Super shift space to toggle the struts back off. Super shift in to give us a border if I wanted it. So one last thing I want to cover because I recently came across this the other day and I thought that could be neat. I'm not sure if I will use this or not, but I wanted to play with this a little bit to show you guys, you know, how you find something that's not already in your config, you know, some functionality and how you add it. Well, I came across this library, xmonad.actions.gridselect. What is grid select? Well, it displays your programs, the names of some of your programs in a 2D grid on the screen. So little squares on the screen with names of programs, maybe your open programs, and then you can use the HJKL keys, the Vim keys, to navigate amongst the programs in that grid and then open them or take you to them, bring focus to them, things like that. I'm not sure if it's something I would use, to be honest. I just launch everything with a D menu, and I don't really uh, need this. But again, I just thought it was neat. So let me show you how I would go about this if I was adding this to my config file. So back to my Emacs config, we need to make sure we have xmonad.actions.gridselect in our imports, and I probably do. Let's see, xmonad.actions.gridselect. Dot grid select. So I've already got the imported library here. So let me add uh, what I need to add. If I go back to this, and I won't bore you guys with any Haskell programming, but it tells you, you know, what to import. I've already got it imported. Uh, some key bindings you should add. And right here, you do, well, they're doing super key plus S. I'll probably choose a different key binding. And then run this command, spawn selected. The, the default config and then a list of programs that you want to appear in this grid. Anyway, so I hacked on this a little bit, just playing around with it. I'm not sure uh, if this is the finished prod product. It probably isn't. But anyway, I added some of the spawn selected stuff that I saw on the hackage site, which is the, some of the Haskell documentation. And anyway, here is what I came up with, this grid select tool, and I did super shift T, runs spawn selected, and then this list of programs. There's the names, and then the commands that they execute. So super shift T brings up this grid, and again, we can navigate it with HJKL. So if I wanted to, you know, I could, uh, what, what do I, I want to open here? Let's, you know, simple terminal. Close that, Super Shift T again. If I wanted to, I could go down to Dead Beef and open Dead Beef. I'm just going to play. Let me quit that. And we don't want to get demonetized. But that's a pretty neat tool. There was also some other functionality uh, built in to this grid select tool. It, it had the ability to just show you your open programs. They're like the open windows on the screen. And... You could either go to those programs wherever they are on whatever workspace or on whatever monitor, or you could choose to bring them to whatever monitor 
and workspace you're currently working on. So if I go back to my config, you will see a Super Shift G is the go to selected functionality. Super Shift B is the bring selected functionality. So if I Super Shift G for go, you know, this is everything that's open on my system right now, including OBS. If I hit enter right now, focus goes to the third monitor that I have OBS running on. You guys don't see it, but right now OBS has the highlighted border around it. Right, It has focus on my monitors, so that's pretty cool. Let me bring focus back to the second of my three monitors here that I'm actually recording. Super Shift B, if I wanted to, I could go back to OBS, and this time if I hit enter, it's going to bring OBS from the third monitor to the monitor that has focus right now, which is my second monitor. Watch what happens. Well, that's pretty cool, right? Uh, how useful is this grid select thing? I don't know. I just thought it was kind of neat. But anyway, this is a little bit of how you hack on these tiling window managers or just hack on anything in general, right? You just go read the documentation and you experiment. If you need to, go find somebody else's configs. Uh, search on Google or DuckDuckGo other people's configs that have imported these libraries and you can probably find some really neat config files out there that somebody else has already done a lot of the heavy lifting for you you take what you want you leave the rest before I go this show was made possible by Ansem, First Chris, Second Chris, Daniel, David, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Corbinian, Mitchell, Natek, Philip, Rob, Robert, Sean, Stephanie, and Willie they're the producers of the show these guys are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about hacking on Xmonad wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all those other fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names that you see on the screen right now. They help support my work over on Patreon. A sincere thank you to each and every one of those guys. And if you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace.